Today we're being joined by a very special guest from Peel Thunder down in Western Australia, potential draft prospect Ava Cristero. Ava, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right, tell us tell us a bit about yourself. What got you into footy and what type of player you are? Um, so I currently play for Peel Thunder in Manchester. I live locally. Um, I started playing football when I was 10 years old and I played for another local club. I played for Secret Harbour and I played so many sports growing up. And then as soon as I started playing football, I just dropped everything else because I just knew it was the sport for me. And I probably played for a couple of years. Then when I was 14 turning 15 and written that year, I got to do the Metro Development Squad for Peel Thunder. And we did a bunch of games and everything. And then I got selected to play in the Rogers Cup team. And then I've been progressing ever since. It's because obviously at Peel Thunder, what was it like you just mentioned there about the process to get into it? How were you feeling heading into that part? Were like, you're like, hopefully I get this. Well, how was that process for you around that time where just before you got officially through the list? Oh, it's very nerve wracking because they start out with such a big squad of girls. And then we do... Um, it was two games. You do a game against girls from the south of Western Australia and then games in the north. We were the, like, the metro, so we were the central Western Australia. Very nerve-wracking because it starts out with such a big list and then they cut back and cut back and cut back. But I did love how, like, the experience of everything because, I don't know, Peel's such, like, a family team. So everyone just, even if you weren't in the team, you were made welcome and everything. So it was really nice. That's good. So obviously you plan to play more Waffle W this year in the league and reserve ball, hopefully league. Um, but obviously you've had two practice matches already. So how's those practice matches gone for you and how's the experience leading into a season playing in those games? It was a really good experience. The first one we had was against Claremont, who were obviously in the uh, grand final last year against East Romanos. So those are the two teams we were up against. The first one, Claremont, the – Overall, as a team, didn't go very well. We suffered like quite a big loss. But individually, I played in the forward line and a little bit of midfield. And it was really good to just get back into it because, you know, like nothing compares to game day fitness. Like you cannot prepare yourself for that. And it was like the hottest day. So it was really good a way to like just, you know, bluntly get back to that. Um, even though it was a big, like the tracking and like GPS showed that we were, we're so much fitter than last year. And I can say that for myself as well, definitely the different programs that we were a lot fitter. And then in the second game again, definitely a lot fitter, a lot faster than last year. Um, kicked a goal in the second game cause I played forward the whole, mostly the whole game yeah. and it, we gelled together better as a team. Our team dynamic worked. We changed up our structures a little bit, but definitely very, like a great way to start the season. Well, so you mentioned there about playing for, up forward a little bit as well. And obviously these days, as you'd be aware, versatility is key. And uh, how important is it also to play in other positions to, you know, cement your spot in a squad, like you said, the way you got into this Peel Thunder system, and then nowadays to cement your spot and then play at a higher level? Yeah, like... And versatility is key. So as like an individual player, I know that I can play different roles if it's defence, if it's a forward, if it's a midfield. I've always been a midfielder since I started when I was 10 years old. Like I've always played mid and now coming up into like the Waffle W side, I'm playing more of a forward role, like a small forward a kind of a, what's the word, explosive type of forward. And it's really cool to kind of get a different perspective on of the game because once you play a position for so long it's quite like funny to see how other players are working because like as a midfielder you're always in the center you're always on the ball and you're never looking on the outside and now playing forward especially when i have to play deeper it's it's completely different like the game has so many aspects and that's kind of what it's like brought up for me yeah so you you mentioned too about playing the two top sides in the practice match. How um, how invaluable is that to have that experience you mentioned at the higher level and in your draft year also and then play the best two? I know ideally everyone wants to play the bottom, but it's good experience for you, I'm sure, 
playing the best now. So because now you know at the level that they you would expect when you're playing in the home and away season too. Yeah, exactly. It's just I personally 100% would rather lose by a lot to the top team in the competition than win by a lot to the bottom just because it builds so much resilience going into the season and it also just shows that's the benchmark. That's where you've got to be. So if you do want something to work towards, that's just given to you on a platter. Like that's what you need to be doing and I think it was good that we had that first game against Claremont. And then the next weekend, had it against East Romano and we kind of looked at what we had been doing and we had to change that up, especially in the forward line. Um, we Our structure was completely wrong. We realised like the we weren't accommodating to the skills that we have in that forward line. And the fact that yeah. we were able to, you know, adjust our forward line and then also adjust who, to who we were playing with the next week, which was East Fremantle, I feel like we did that really, really well and that helped a lot because I think we matched their level of um, gameplay compared yeah. to the world. So what's it like playing with some of the girls at the club? Obviously, I've had Holly Britton on and I've had Georgia Haynes on, two River people. What's it like playing with again, alongside girls like that and then some other teammates you play with? And how, how's the bond filled at all that time since you've been there? Oh, it's been really good, like especially with a couple of girls that I have been with since the Rogers kind of moved up together it's great like especially this year um everyone's bonded as like one big family honestly at Peel and it's great like I could even if it's a girl who's 15 years older than me or a girl who's just joined the club I could talk to anyone it's a really good bond and yeah girls like Holly Britton and that they're, they're just lovely so it's a great like uh environment to be around it's really good it's very good too that you mentioned too no matter the age um, you know, you still seem to get along well. Because I, and I've seen it when I used to play and then I've seen it at other clubs, you know. The younger guys or girls stick with those, their age group and the older ones with the older ones. It's good to see that you mentioned there that at least for yourself, you can mix with any age, whether they're 10 years older or not or younger. Oh, definitely. Like, it's just, I don't know, everyone's just, like, gets along very well, which is great for the team dynamic as well, especially, like, coming into a new year, we've got a new coach and sometimes that, well, not a new coach, he has been around, but a new head coach. And um, sometimes that can, you know, shift the dynamic of a team. But honestly, it's it's been really, really good. Like, like some of the girls, like Chippy and Crystal, who are obviously, like, quite a, like, there's an age gap between us. It doesn't feel like couldn't talk to them or couldn't ask for advice or anything like that. And that makes it a whole, especially when transitioning from Rogers to Waffle W, like I have in the past year, it makes it a lot easier and it makes you feel like, yeah, you you should be on the team. You deserve that spot. So obviously you're heading into your draft year now this year, Ava. So how do you, how do you feel this year, probably compared to how you played, how you were previous years and, yeah, how you're handling it so far and how do you think you'll handle it going into this year? Um, well, so I had my league debut last year and Peel as a whole wasn't doing the best as like in terms of like positioning on the ladder and winning games and everything. And the game I got my debut in was against Manor. Um, it was a pretty heavy loss. It was just not the best induction into that sort of game, like how fast Waffle W is compared to like you can't even match it among so many other things. Um, but last year, I think the biggest thing that I lacked and why I didn't probably was not confident in myself to play Waffle W was I lacked the composure to play at that level. Like my skills were okay, but then when it came into the moment where everything's so fast paced, but you need to make that quick decision, I probably lacked that. And so in the off season, that's really what I worked on, like reflex skills, all of that type of which sounds really basic, but it honestly has helped. And now coming into the preseason, I feel so much more composed. And those preseason games that we just had proved that kind of to myself that I was like, no, I've come back a new sort of player. I'm composed. I can read the situation better still while doing skills and obviously basics. That, but being able to execute a kick while under pressure and have that situational awareness to know everyone's a lot stronger, everyone's a lot faster there's going to be people that 100% are going to beat you every single time. Just things like that, yeah. I love how, you know, you talk about, I know everyone likes, they might not like to talk themselves up, but they gender steer steer away from publicly at least. 
talking about the things they they need to work on or aren't great. And it's great to hear you mention the and you mentioned too only just before about talking about playing the top teams and how better that is into getting smash uh, smashing a bottom team than losing big to a top team and the experience you get from it. and just then talking about the negative or the things you want to improve on. It's just great to hear stuff like that. Mm -hmm, definitely. I feel like being self-aware is your first step to getting better. So if I know that I give myself a goal and set that, I try to do that before the week or before, like if we have like a game at the end of the week, say the preseason matches, I made sure that I'd set myself those goals and then work with them all week at training and then on the games. And if I didn't meet those like expectations that I'd set myself, obviously in the reasonable uh, they would be achievable goals. If I did not reach them, then I would look back and go, okay, so what's happened here? Why has this happened? Is it like an outside factor or, or is it my actual playing ability? So I think that helps me a lot as a player and that's helped with my um, composure and resilience coming up into the Waffle W. Yeah. So, so obviously you're into the draft year this year. Um, how, how do you feel overall? Obviously you mentioned about making your league debut last year, but in also – throughout this year, do you get any advice from any of the coaches how to handle this year in particular uh, compared to previous seasons? Um, yes, I do. Obvi I get a lot of advice, which is great because I'm always one to take on advice uh, from my coaches and everything. It's more just take it week by week, not mm -hmm. look at the biggest picture, like the draft at the end of the year. If it happens this year, if it happens a year after, you've got to take it week by week because I feel like in football, especially in women's football, things can change really drastically. Like I could be planning something at the end of the season, that a goal that I want to set, and then something could happen mid-season and say like an injury, anything like that. So I feel like expectations and stuff like that, it's helped talk to coaches and doing – um, oh, what are they called, like IDPs and like writing down what the goals that you want and everything. I find that talking to coaches, what works best for me individually is setting short-term goals, not necessarily in a year's time, three years time, but in a week, in a month, what's going to work best then. So I feel like that's the best advice that I've been given by coaches is to what's right in front of you, blocked by multiple hurdles that you see. That's good. So, okay, at, at this stage, then, what's some goal, some mini goals you set for yourself, say, for the next month or so? Well, for the next month, we have – I want to consistently in my games run between 9.5 and 10 Ks per game. I want that to be my benchmark because – I know that my, I know that I can do it, and I want to just hold that fitness because when we're deloading after the height of preseason, I know that sometimes, like especially last year, what I was injured this time last year, I was in a moon boot because I'd I can't even remember what the name is. I'd almost fractured a bone in my foot, and I know that when I came back, I was recovered. My fitness dropped really terribly, so I want to keep that going into the season. And another one is that I'm giving myself in game. I want to take at least two deep, like decent overhead marks because I'm not the tallest player. And that's the aspect of my game that I struggle with is that overhead marking and contested marking. So just smaller goals like that that I can build on because setting a massive goal, like I said, or even not even a long-term one saying that, well, I want to kick six goals this weekend, it's not achievable and it just – sets you up for disappointment and then it um, doesn't motivate you to keep pursuing what you want to do. So those are currently two of my main goals that I've set. And you're very right there about aiming for something like a six-goal game. It just, I mean, it could happen, but, you know, if you want to be yeah. realistic, it's highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, what are some of your strengths as a footballer? What would you say some of your key weapons? Um, definitely my fitness. I... I do, I'm very good at endurance running. Like I'm probably not the fastest sprinter on the field, but I can maintain that speed for multiple, multiple, multiple attempts. Um, I've got a real, I'm very good at ground level because I don't have much height to me. So con like I said, contestant is not always my strongest, but my ground ball, I'm pretty confident in that. My kicking ability as well, I can kick on both feet. So pretty confidently. So that's probably my I'm confident with, especially currently, like right now. And other than that, I feel like I've got 
pretty good game awareness going into the season. And explosiveness, I do think that I can bring that to an aspect of a team situation, yeah. That's good. So, obviously, um, footy accomplishments in your career in your career so far at any level, what are some of your major individual or team accomplishments you've succeeded in throughout your footy journey so far? That could be either at Peel or just at a local level. Oh, well, when I was younger at local level, I was the captain and I can't remember if it was uh, runner-up best and fairest or, or, or most consistent player I used to, I got every single year. And I was the team captain and then going into my first season at Peel, that kind of set me up. And then just last year with the Rogers, I won the trademark player, which is basically at Peel. It's an award that you get for the player who on field and off field in like embodies their value, like Peel values the most. I was, I was quite proud to accept that award. And I got runner up to the Bears and best last year at Peel. And um, I played State 16 two years ago when I was of the age to play and that was a really good experience especially for the um coaching aspect like the coaches that were there were really really good um those are probably that's probably my biggest achievements right now I'm just yeah that's good you mentioned you about the trademark and you said about on and off the field and you're just showing it here the way you're talking and talking about what you want to improve on and what some of your strengths are and then a runner-up you said then in the, in the best affairs last year um how was that night for you? How does the voting system work? Was it, do they do round by round? If so, how close was it? And how did you feel when it got closer? Did you think you could have had it? Did you think you weren't going to get it? How was the feeling? Um, I was not really nervous at all because stuff like that, like especially awards, it's not like a big motivator for me because I, I'm, I, the reason that I love football is I love the team aspect of it and I'd rather win a premiership as a team than win best and fairest. Like that's never been a direct goal for me. I prefer to like be the most consistent player rather than have an amazing game and then a terrible game. Um, I wasn't that nervous. I didn't think I was going to win. I did not think I was going to get second. I got second to, she's like my best friend, Tess Congress. Um, she won by a far. I think she was on 86 votes and I was on 50 something. She had won by a far. Um, it, we were more excited because it was Evie Couch's first year and she was, we were hoping her to win best and fairest for the league side. So I think we're all more nervous for her, but I was definitely proud to win the trademark player overall. I know that the runner-up fairest and best and fairest and best is like a prestigious thing, but personally the trademark player meant more to me because it meant like my coaches and my, like the players around me viewed me as someone who is like respectful and on and off the field. And I think I like valued that a lot more. Uh, that's good. And, um, leadership i think you mentioned it briefly there is that something you've always wanted to be in is it something you're in appeal or something that you want to do in the future or if you don't have the title are you more an off title leader where you still help out if need be definitely i've like in my football career i've always gone for that leadership role whether i was captain or whether even this year coming into the waffle w season I know I'm not the most experienced player. I'm not the best player on the field, but I know that my game awareness and my communication with other players in a leadership style can always pull through, even if we're absolutely gassed. I know that I can still communicate that. And, um, yeah, I think I value that about myself because I, I struggle playing along girls who can't communicate on the field because that's just the basic of football and sometimes in girls football it can drop a little bit with the talk and everything and it makes it really hard so something like that is so it's like a one percent it's like laying a shepherd you don't have a stat for it but it means so much when you're on, on and off the field so a leadership uh position like that i'm not looking for anything but i'll always be the person that yeah like you said doesn't have a title but is always there to you know push everyone on no. Obviously, two, obviously, I'm sure at some point throughout the year, if you haven't already, there'll start to be club meetings with AFLW clubs and everything like that. How do you feel you would go in your first uh, meeting with the club, whether that's online or in person? And would that factor into how you feel, whether it was in person or not, being more nervous? Or would you be? do you think you'd be pretty cool and calm? 
I would definitely put on a cool and calm exterior, but on the inside, I'd be very, very nervous. I think, yeah, that would definitely be nerve wracking, especially this year because coming into the Waffle W and everything, it's a big change and stuff like that. Like even this interview, I was so excited to do this because it's such a step up and I feel like it's a really good experience and like prepping yourself for doing that because like Waffle W is like a big deal and it's a thing to be proud of. So, yeah, I would be very nervous. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that about this as well. Um, so obviously, Peel obviously linked to Fremantle to some degree. So how is it we're having some of the Freo girls, I'm sure, would come to train some of the coaching staff at some point throughout the year or we, they pop through from time to time. How beneficial is it to have some form of Fremantle flavour around already if that opportunity was arising at the end of the year to be picked up or it, just in those meetings that you kind of get a gist of what they're like already? Um, well, recently we haven't had anything like that, but Fremantle, they do put on a, like a 60, it's kind of like the state 16s. I did it for a couple years in a row where you go there and you train with the players and like the likes of like Hayley Miller and, um, Anya, she's the rock. I can't say her last name though, so I don't want to book sure it. Um, training with <laughs> younger, yeah. Training with them when I was a little bit younger, I think that's the most involvement that I've had so far with Fremantle as a club. It was really good and I think that's actually like especially goal kicking, um, the stuff they did with that and like the basic skills and then showing what their meal plans looked like, what their gym like rotations looked like. That was really crucial and because I did that in my first year at Rogers and really put me on the path. I was like, yeah, I really like value this experience like I'm very grateful for seeing what it's like um probably the closest thing we have at the moment is Holly Ritten's older sister Jade who comes down from west coast not Fremantle and she comes to trainings and helps out and every time that she has a piece of information I always value it because I know that she is on the outside looking in and she can definitely help help out wherever she can yeah no you continue you're good yeah. Yeah, sure. Now, you mentioned Jade and Holly, obviously being sisters. Now, when I had Holly on only uh, just over a week ago, the toughest question she's probably ever been asked, who's the better player, herself or her sister? Who would you say is the better of the two as a footballer? Oh, or, yeah. a both amazing players, and they both play very different roles. I think Holly's great in an inside mid and also in a forward role. Like, we've been, they've just come back from training from being at the state 18s and being able to play like that high half forward role with her has been amazing. And then I've also, I've always watched Jade play. I've never played with, with her, her play and her on the wing and everything. I've seen her play at the Eagles. She's just amazing. So I think they're both as great as each other in their separate roles, but they're both amazing, yeah. Don't it go straight down the middle. That's the way to go about it. Who did you grow up supporting? Oh, West Coast. I'm a proud West Coast supporter. Even though they're not in their brightest season, I've always been a proud West Coast supporter. Yeah. So how interesting is it, is it to some degree being involved with Fremantle but having that affiliation with Freo when you're an Eagle? Because obviously, like anyone, the two state clubs, in this case, or in Queensland or in Adelaide, they don't really like each other. Yeah, it's a lot like that over here in like WA with the difference. Like even at school when you were little, if someone said to me they were a Fremantle fan, I'd be like, oh, get away from me. I don't want to associate with you. There's that divide. But um, I don't really think of it like that, to be honest. I feel like I'm just proud to wear the pure colours. And if they're associated with Fremantle, they're associated with Fremantle. I have a blue and gold heart, but... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I don't know what this was. This is a bit of an off topic because I've never seen it happen before. But on your screen, a thumbs down thing popped. I don't know what that is. But what I will say is I didn't put that up. I don't know how the hell that's happened, but it did. So I was thrown off. I don't know how that happened, but that's all good. We'll move along. I just wanted to say that for people to think that I put that up. I did not put that up. Um, anyway. I didn't see it. So. No, it was there for like two seconds. I thought oh, I was really? seeing it. It was literally just beside your head like there and it popped up a thumbs down like that. Oh, God. <laughs> that is a person I've got completely thrown off now where I was at. Um, <laughs> now, obviously, obviously, you would see some mates get drafted over the last year or so, get picked up. Who's someone you, or even if you don't know them personally, but someone from the same state or another state 
Are you most excited to see how they'll go who have just been picked up? Oh, definitely Kat and Sir Hoy. Um, right before she left to go to Sydney, when she was still at training, she's still training with us and it genuinely, I look up to her so much as a player, the way that she can move the ball, it looks like she's in slow, she's not in slow motion, but it looks like she's in slow motion. Like even the way she runs, she's so just like, she just, everything she does is just perfect to a T. Like even if she mucks up a kick or it doesn't, it doesn't look like she has and she always has second, third, fourth efforts. Like I remember in my first year, I think it was I watched her play a game in the Waffle W and the way she moves the ball, it's just like she was way ahead of her age. Like she should have been like at an A level. I'm very excited to see her play just because I have, I've taught, like known her, I've been able to talk to her when she's going through that. Um, transition to moving to Sydney I feel like that's going to be very exciting to see how she does and yeah I'll definitely be in orange colours going to watch her when if she gets to play in WA and, uh, Yeah I've had Kate Lyon before she's fantastic and I've obviously mentioned had some of your teammates on Holly in Georgia and uh, there's probably more as well or, and people from other not just appeal that have talked so highly of Kate Lyon and just shows what a great character she is what a great person she is, person she is. and going back to her you know, as you said, appeal when she doesn't have to. Mm -hmm, definitely. And even, like, her, what you just said about her character, she's just a lovely girl. Like, she's honestly the nicest. She's hilarious. And um, that reflects, I think, in her football ability, like her confidence and, like, the way that she just moves through trainings, moves through games, is able to just keep pushing boundaries and getting better and better. I definitely look up to her a lot for that and, like, aspire be able to have that sort of game style where you just keep pushing the boundaries and keep being able to do more and more and more. Yeah, it's amazing. Would you be someone who would be open to moving to any state if the opportunity arose at the end of the year? Like, were you someone that would be more open or wait and see what happens throughout the year? Or how are you with this process, of, obviously, with the options of states and national drafts? Yeah, I've talked to a couple of my girlfriends about it outside of Peel because they obviously ask and have questions. Um, I probably, if I was to get drafted in a few years, I'd probably look at the option to move out of state. But currently I definitely want to stay in state just because I am trying to get an early offer into uni here. And it's a big, big change and, I don't know, moving to another state and then playing for new teams and all of that, that's a, a lot, especially at such a young age. That's why, like, Caitlin Sir, who I have so much, like, respect for her to be able to move to a new uni, a new state, a new team all by herself. Like, that takes, like, immense courage to be able to do something like that. And I, I feel like right now I probably wouldn't have the strength to do that by myself, yeah. That's fair enough. Look, as I said to you before, but I'll say it again here, especially in this particular question, I love the honesty because, you know, I could tell with some people that, you know, they'll, they'll say they're happy to go anywhere, but I can just tell, you know, the, the way they speak or, you know, when the actual nomination part happens, the official nominations, you see they've gone the opposite of what they say. And just love the honesty you're giving so far. And, uh, but yeah, it, it, you know, and I agree with you. I mean, I just came from preface, you may know, from the weekend. And uh, I, I didn't want to do the travel for three days let alone you know a whole career yeah definitely it's it's such like because playing football at a higher level like the jump from it like i said even playing at low levels to coming to waffle w that's still a big jump because the sacrifices that you have to make and probably moving state in that is the biggest sacrifice that you have to make because you have a life and then football becomes that life so it's a very it's a very big change and get yeah, people that are able to do that and completely change what that's going to be. I have so much envy for them because I'm like, oh, wow, you can just go ahead and do that. Like, that's amazing. And at this time, just because I'm only quite young still, I feel like I need to settle myself, have some foundation moving on, and then later look at the options. And like, like, you know, you've hinted at it here, you know, you want to get drafted this year. It's not the end of the world. And if you do, that's obviously bloody awesome. And then if not, 
you could be 30 years old. Obviously, no one near that. But you could, if you're 30 years old, you can still get picked up. There's all these other avenues, mid-season drafts and the men's and women's is injury replacement players. There's all these other SSP signing periods outside of the actual draft. So there's all these other ways of getting in. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I feel like if personally, um, I want to definitely improve my personal playing ability, my game sense in that before I get uh, go anywhere near the draft. If that's at the end of this year and I feel confident, then that, that will happen. But if I get to even midway through this year and go, you know what, I don't, like this is the best step for me, then I'll wait till the next year or even the year after because I know that it's not like a definite thing that, oh, you have to get drafted in the year that you turn 18. Like you're, that's what has to happen. I know that doesn't and I know it's very different for everyone and I don't want to be able to upset like my playing and not love that I'm doing it anymore because I'm pushing myself too hard to make an uh, expectation that isn't actually the reality of the situation. Uh, that's yeah, it's very true and like yeah there's plenty of time and you don't want to burn yourself out you unless you said overdoing it because sometimes then that could make some people just go you know what i've worked too hard for this you know try to over exceed and then they yeah. don't get they go that bugger i've done enough now and whatever happens happens yeah exactly i feel like i would much rather work on my playing ability and even work on myself outside of the club and like what I want to do, what I want to go to uni, the job that I want to get, stuff like that that's outside factors. I also want to contribute that. And so, like I said, if it happens this year, if it happens in three years, it doesn't really bother me the time frame. I know that I'm working towards in the very, very far future, but I try not to focus on that. Like I said earlier, it's the smaller things and it's the moving slower but still consistent. Who are some of your favourite teammates down at Peel? Oh, definitely. I have so many favourites. I, honestly, me and Tess Congress are very, very close and girls such as Riley Fisher and Chelsea Hutchinson and obviously Holly and Georgia and all those girls, they're all so lovely. I, honestly, I get along with everyone. Like, it's a really good team environment at the moment. I don't think there's one person that I could say that, oh, I didn't really get, I don't really talk to them, I don't really get along with them. Everyone, like, it's a really, really, really good place to be at the moment. Like I said, I can just tell from talking to you now for this half an hour or so, so far, that, you know, you can get along with anyone. And, I mean, if they're not getting along with you, then they might be the problem, which you just, as you said, you get along well with everyone. And you mentioned Caitlin too, which is, again is a perfect example because I, I remember they now I remember Riley Fisher and Chelsea Hudson when I had on recently. They mentioned about Caitlin and all the respect they have for her and the love they have for her. And uh and it just shows what a close group you all are when yes, you're saying the same things, but the bond is stronger as well. Oh, definitely. And I feel like that comes through not necessarily winning games all the time and being at the top of the ladder, having to share the common like losses and the big defeats and games like obviously no one wants to go through that but it does build you closer as a team and I feel like in different scenarios it can either like I said build it build you closer like it done has done with us or it can completely oppose you and make you resent what you're playing for and I don't think myself individually as a player losing like that could make me resent but I know I have seen it with other players that I've known in the past that losing and having that like poor team and not winning a lot has affected their how much they love the game and how much they want to play so I feel like that's a really big aspect in how we've all come together um and other than that no, we're just like a big happy family at the moment it's honestly like it's the thing I look forward to during the week is the Tuesday and a Thursday training like it's honestly the best because the social side of it even with the staff like the physio our SNC coach they're just like the best people to be around they're so funny and it's just like a really good vibe to be around yeah you mentioned I mean you mentioned about losing streaks and everything like that teams are struggling I unfortunately know that it took me only or well, my team uh, literally until about three, four games ago. It took 1,092 days between the last win. And then after that, 
I know a very long time, and then and then winning, losing the week after winning, but then winning the next one. So win took a thousand and ninety-two days to win one game, and then won two in the space of three games. It just it can change just like that too. It can change just like that, and that's like, well, congrats to your team. By the way, that's amazing to be able to win in that in those circumstances. But I feel like you have to start from somewhere. Even if you're losing every game by 100 points, there has to be some point of turnaround. Like you can't just wake up one day and it's all to be better. It's the hard work. And that's probably the another, another thing that's brought us even closer this year is it's been a pretty hard preseason. Like we've been running a lot, especially. Like our Ks have been up this preseason. And that like hard work and not being able to like breathe after doing our running and having to lean on each other and like those shared experiences of being like oh i never want to do that again i feel like that definitely brings us closer as a team and now we see the funny side of it but it's a good thing to laugh about i know for those 1092 days there wasn't much laughing there was smashing after smashing after smashing these this isn't just losses these are bad so this is in cricket not footy but i did play footy a while not too long ago but in terms of cricket, you know, losing by 100 runs, getting rolled for 50, they make it quickly. Yeah, and then what was more special, I know we're talking about individuals and the team, there was two guys in particular in that team. Everyone that's been in that team has either played randomly or played another grade and won there. So they had really, you know, kind of had their winning feeling over time. But me and this other guy, we had been in, I was 1,092 days, and I thought that was bad. He had This other guy hadn't won for 1,422 days. It's just so long. And, yeah, and then... That game we won for the first time in that time, it was so awesome, even though we didn't contribute individually. And then this other win two games later, we're like, you know, we had this win, we're so happy, and we wanted to contribute. So the next game we won two games ago, we were chasing this mammoth total of 333 in cricket in 40-over match, and we're playing, you know, we're not that strong. And for us two individually to basically get us over the line made all that 1,000-plus days Oh, so sweet to win your team the game single-handedly in the end. Yeah, it must have been a good celebration after. I mean, there's a cricket vlog. I, I do every cricket vlog every week. And that one was a really nice one, let's just yeah. say. Yeah. Yes. Now, thank you. Um, so who loves the limelight, the attention at the Peel Thunder side and can't get enough of it? Oh, honestly, I don't think anyone is a – a massive attention seeker like that. Oh, probably one of our coaches, Shrubsy, she's got a new mullet and she loves to show it off when she can. On our media day, she was definitely giving it a good shake in front of the camera. But other than that, and that's obviously just in a joking. I don't think anyone media crazy like that. Um, yeah, I feel like no one's, yeah, I don't think anyone, honestly. If there was, I'd probably think of them straight away, but I can't think of anyone, no. So, obviously, nicknames, Ava. Your name's short enough. So, what – well, your first name is. So, what nicknames do you get that you like or dislike? And two, and I'm sure I butchered it before, how many people can constantly butcher your last name? And how do you feel about it now? Do you just give up? Do you, do you does it still annoy you? How, how do you go with all that? Um, I'll actually start with question two. Kristen yeah. errors. Say it. So many people butcher it, and not even the pronunciation. It's the spelling of it. The amount of H's that have been thrown in front of the R is insane. And even on like jersey, I for my school, I used to play volleyball. On every jersey that I had, it was C H R. After I told them a million times, that's frustrating. But mm. At a point, I just give up. If people can't say it properly, they can't say it properly. It's a bit of a hard last name. And nicknames, I probably get Crystal a lot. Um, that's probably the one I get the most at footy just because I feel like it's easy, even though Ava's like the quickest, easiest name to say. People still call me Christo. That's probably the biggest one I have. Other than that, you can't really make a nickname out of Ava. It's pretty short. I go shorter maybe Ave. Yeah, I, I do get Aves. I get Aves. Oh, I do. By my very close girlfriends, they call me Aves. But Crystal, it is at football. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned there about the line one. There's not really anyone. Is there any coaches pet? Um, not 
Really? Honestly, everyone's just quite humble. <laughs> everyone's not even think of anyone. There's no like real out people. That's fair enough. Yeah. Any outside of footy interest that you have? Um, well, currently I'm an ATAR student, so I'm studying to be a nurse because I'm going into cosmetics and everything like that. Big interest for mine at the moment because I've always loved academics and school and stuff. I've always tried to do mm. that. And now that I'm in ATAR, it's a, it's a hefty load of work. But I really I do value it and that's probably my biggest um outside of football goal that I'm working towards and what I'm trying to pursue in the future. And other than that, I, I'm not sure. I just love hanging out with my friends and being social and everything like that, being a 10-year-old girl, really. That's fair enough. And all the best too in that nursing path as well. No worries. Um, I don't know if that – I think they cut out then. Um, but, yeah, so – well, what would you say is the best individual game you've ever played in that's got you into the position that you're in right now? Oh, that's a really good question. I have to think <laughs> um, there was a game last year that kind of set me up for the season that I had, and I, I can't remember what round it was, but it was against Claremont in the Rogers. And I'd set myself, so the biggest that I set, when I started at Peel was in the first year I wanted to play Rogers. the second year I wanted to have my league debut and the third year I wanted to be in the Waffle W squad and so even though I focus like on smaller goals that was the main thing that I was working towards so at the start of last season I really league debut I wanted to be able to make it if, even if it was one like it was I just wanted that league game just to set me up and it was a game against Claremont and I just told myself I want to be an inside midfielder in my Rogers team and I want to have that explosive. I want to be able to have all those clearances and that's what I did. I had a really good game where I, I just was able to outrun everyone and just run through the packs and break those lines, which is something that I think I do really, really well take on the contest and not be um, timid to stand up to other players and fend them off or anything and pretty much – very good disposal efficiency as well. I was hitting targets. I was doing everything. And that's I think, was really good to have early in the season, especially knowing that I wanted that league debut. And I feel like that set me up for a good seven, six, seven game that I just built on that confidence and I built on that fact that I, I worked hard, I deserve this spot and I want this spot. And I feel like that's what really propelled me last year. And I feel like that's the one I think of that, has been my best game, especially. Really good. And then you mentioned too about more playing up forward recently. So what would you feel is the best goal you've ever kicked at Ava? Is there any particular goal that comes to mind? Well, I haven't kicked a lot of goals in my career because I've been mainly an inside midfielder and a lot of our game structure, well, in past years, has been to, if you're a midfielder, you've got to stay out of the forward line unless you're going to defend. But yeah. I can't think of one I kicked... I think it was because it was on an angle and I reckon it was a good 45 metres out and my kick's usually not that big. So I think I kicked it from there and it was at the end of the game to put us into the grand final in my first year at Rogers and I was just so stoked that I kicked it and so excited for the grand final the next week and, yeah, I think that would have to be it and everyone got around me and it was a great feeling. Very awesome. <laughs> You're talking about the occasion you... Can't get much better than that. And it's great to see that you said about people getting around and it got you into the grand finals. Like, you know, that angle you said, whether the game was a dead rubber, that's, you know, awesome enough. But to do it in that moment and not only to win a game, but a prelim like that, that just it must have felt awesome. It was it was really cool. I do actually remember this game. I remember it because we lost the grand final by a lot, which I try not to remember. But this prelim, it was against South Fremantle. And... It was on an angle and I usually don't do well from it was looking that way onto goals and I usually do better from the other way. So I was a little bit nervous. I think we were like just under two goals up, but they were slowly coming back. So to like cement the win in, mm -hmm. it was such a feeling to be able to do that. And I, 
I don't know, in the moment I just had confidence in myself and I feel like that was the case. So it was really good. I would be feeling really good about that too. What is some of your favourite TV shows or movies that you like? Oh, I'm a true crime enthusiast. Even if it isn't true crime, I love all criminal minds and shows like that. Anything to do with that, I just, that's my favourite. I love it. It's so interesting to me. Yeah, stuff like that. I love it. I love the ones. And if said, even if it's not real ones, so like uh, the ones like, you know, Law and Order or. Oh, that I top- love the SUV. That is my all time favourite. Yes, I'm, I'm going to let, let the cat out of the bag to people. Um, yes, that is currently what I still watch right now. And I'm waiting for the new ones to keep coming. It's been two weeks since the last episode, so not good enough. Oh, really? I haven't watched the most recent season, but I keep, because I'm the type of person, like I can watch a season, love it, and then I keep binge watching that season over and over again because I'm too scared that it's going to get bad in the newer seasons and I'm not going to want to watch it anymore. And also another way to think of it is you do not want to go too quick because then now like now i'm waiting week a week for one episode you watch that within a day of it opening because you waited a week for one and then you wait another week that repetitive cycle yeah and then it's just like oh you've just watched it It it's 45 minutes and then it's just gone in like 30 seconds i feel wait all that time for the next one so you mentioned about re-watching it over and over again this this season are you wanting to remember scene by scene because i certainly am I don't think I am. I'm not just a little scene, but pretty much a lot. I'll say more than half. Yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm a bit, a bit forgetful sometimes. So I try and find a way now, Ava, where I try and forget because I watch it wanting to pretend like I don't know, but I really know, and I'm just trying to zone out, so I'm not even thinking about it while watching yeah. it for repeated ones, just so. You know, because I like it, but it's like, okay, this, this guy's about to get hit in the head, back of the head in three, two, one, there it is. You know what I mean? Like, you can you just know when it's coming. And I try not to have that. I've got to stop thinking smart about these shows and try and act dumb. Like, oh, hang on, is that? No, hang on, wait, no, that's that. No, that's not it. You know what I mean? Yeah, see, I'm the complete opposite. I just forget straight away, and then I watch it back, and I was like, oh, did this happen the last time I watched this? I'm more like that. I can never remember. I do have the rare rare moment like that where sometimes it won't sink to me a couple of minutes into the episode or 20 seconds in. On the odd occasion, one will take me like six, seven minutes for a particular scene to come up for me to realise, like, oh, yep, this guy's this or this guy's done this. Yep, he's gone. He's, this is where he gets arrested. You know, sometimes it takes a few minutes sometimes to get into it. But generally, no, I'll remember pretty much all of it. But anyway, that's that. Um, a great show, that is. Um, where was I? Um if you could approach any player or players from another club, let's say join the Eagles in the AFL or AFLW, who would you want to approach from another club to join the Eagles and why? Hmm. Other than the Eagles? Oh, no, no, to join the Eagles. So you can be as unrealistic as you want. You can put your list manager hat on. If you're the list manager, you're taking the Eagles coaching, um, list management role of the men's or women's or both. Who are you approaching from another club to join the club immediately? You can be as unrealistic as you want. In the women's perspective, I love, she's a player from Adelaide Crows. Her name's Maddie Newman. I, she's a TikTok. She's a twin sister. She has a TikTok account. I love how she plays. Like, she is such a strong, consistent player. And the way that she executes her skills, I always. So probably, I'm an Eagles fan first, but probably in the women's Adelaide second, just for her, because I love how she plays. Definitely. She's a good footballer, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I knew who Maddie Newman is. I watched the competition clearly, but um, yeah, her her TikTok and Facebook and Instagram things I haven't really noticed until the last few months. But they're actually her and Haley and her twin sister in particular. They're pretty good at that stuff. Yeah, they are, and their brand. I'm definitely going to buy some of their clothes because they're actually super cute as well. And I love that. I probably look up to her a lot as a like an AFL a W player and as also like just a woman in general because she can do both sides she can do business she can have a career and then also be a football player and i feel like that's like such an achievement to have it's really cool she can do things on and off the field and i might even clip this and put this as the instagram reel and see if maddie or Haley see this we'll see we'll try our luck and it doesn't hurt to try yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see um 
what's something <laughs> knowing the way you've spoken so far i don't think there is an answer here but we'll try what's something someone does at the club that you can't stand with that's leaving rubbish around just scaring people just being flat out annoying is there anything that comes to mind here ava I can think of one thing. It's when I rock up to training and I see that the SNC coaches set out the cones for a 2K. That gets me down a little bit. I'm not going to lie. That's probably something that annoys me. Um, I don't think it's anyone in particular, but um, oh, if the bibs aren't washed and we have to put the bibs on and they absolutely stink, that is one thing. I hate that. The smell of them is so gross. I remember back when I was playing about five years ago, and I remember the exact same. It was just absolutely disgusting. And I said, even at some point, I'm like, I'm not wearing this. This reeks. But anyway, um, and, you know, you mentioned too about the training. I actually recently went to the under-18s, you know, and talking about the 2K time trials and stuff. And I asked some of the girls there through through my channel, and I asked them, I said, oh, how did you just go with the 2K? How did you like it? They said they loved it. I, I don't know if that's a real answer. Who likes that? Yeah, I do not believe that for a second. I cannot stand 2Ks because I know that I'm a good runner. I know that I can do it and then it comes to the moment and then I feel terrible. I'm like, this is not how I thought I would do. That's very true. I mean, it, it doesn't help that one of their coaches was right near them, literally about 15 metres away. So it's like, you got to pump it up. He's right there. Yeah. <laughs> that may have been why, but anyway, regardless though, yeah. Uh, you can be good at it and everything, but how you enjoy it and that, especially at, you know, hot weather or just consistently hot. Oh, uh, make, weather. Yeah, I I applaud the people that do that for, that do athletics really and stuff like that. And in any and all conditions, I've seen them doing in the wet, on track and field and stuff like that. It's actually pretty impressive now that I bring it up and think about it a bit more. Yeah, it is, honestly, especially in those type of conditions. Like the pre-season over the summer, it's been like so hot, like 40-degree days and it's still 38 degrees. When we get to training at like 5 o'clock, it's, it's just the worst because you just, you know that hot air feeling that you can't breathe? So I feel like I, it's like awful. I'm just like, oh, great, I can't wait till this is over. And while I was in Perth for the three days, I think we brought the Victorian weather back over a little bit because it was just mid twenties. Or oh, one day was thirty, but it was like a cool breeze. On so what day would that have been? Friday, I think it was, and it wasn't that. But it was hot, but not extremely hot. Um, and then Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday was nice and cool and a bit wet a little bit. So that was a nice change. Yeah, that would have been that would have been so much better. It's been a bit cloudy. It's still been humid, but it's been a little bit colder at the moment. So thank God. I know that's that's definitely a change for Perth at least. Um, now you mentioned earlier about dropping some other sports earlier on. So, how did you feel you fared to those other sports outside of footy that you played? Um, I have always been a really athletic. Like ever since I was little, if I wasn't doing a sport, I wasn't happy. If I wasn't outside running, I wasn't happy. So I've pretty much tried like every single sport book. I've been a dancer, I've played tennis, soccer, basketball, netball, done all of them. Um, like I said before, like as soon as I started playing football, I knew that it was like my sport, like the thing that I loved. And I've always tried to not necessarily be in a team, but have a different sport at the same time that I was doing. So footy didn't consume me and I had an outlet of sport that I could still pursue. And it was just for fun. So like that's been volleyball for me at some point. Yep. Um, I've done gym things, swimming, anything like that. I just, I always love any sport, but it's just a way of fun because football is fun. But then when it really comes down to the wire and you have to focus in, it's good to have another sort of outlet that you can use for sport that isn't just quite intense. You mentioned all those lists of sports and I'm sure you probably mentioned something you haven't played, but did you ever play cricket? I did not like for a team, but we used to do schools cup for it. To be oh, the nice. yeah, I did enjoy that. Funny, it was very, very fun. So, did you just say then you were a batsman? Mm -hmm. so, there's a catchphrase I like to use. Um, you can say if you do or don't, but um, or like it or not. But I have for for batting. So the last two years before last year, I was more of a batter, and. Then the last few years, I've been more of a bowler. So originally, I started with a catchphrase where I only deal in boundaries because literally, I was either going out or in boundaries. There was no in between. 
And for a week at bowling now, since I've brought in the last two, he's getting a fair few wickets last year and a little bit this year, he's only dealing wickets. What do you think of that catchphrase? And were you one when you played at the school level to do either or or both? Oh, probably, probably more of the first one, but I do like that catchphrase. It's actually quite clever. That's Yeah, I like that. That's really good. I've never been the best at bowling, even when we do it just at like the carnivals and everything. I definitely, yeah, I think I'm definitely more of a batsman, but I do like that. What it it was dealing dealing only, only with wickets. Yeah, only dealing boundaries, only dealing wickets. They're the two. Wickets, I do like that one. That one's good. Yeah, I literally so I used to have a merch store for my page and everything, and I literally I'm not even kidding. I had one of them was as the wickets was only reason, but the other one when I did have it was the dealing in boundaries. I literally had a shirt for that. Oh really? Oh, that, uh, see, that's so cool. I love that. People bought it, and it's not—it's not about that, but it's like the fact that people get around it. And even now, when I go to the games that I mentioned before about getting it filmed, people go, "Oh, there's Scoops with that's my Nick Page nickname," and they'll be like, "Oh, here's Scoops, get the vlog ready, fellas. He's gonna only do it." But you know, you know how it goes. And then yeah, yeah. it's uh, pretty funny to banter with stuff like that too. But anyway, more about yeah. more about me. Um, what are some fun facts about you, Ava? That people may not know about you oh well one i can think of in my head is i have absolutely terrible eyesight i'm wearing my contacts right now but my glasses are like this thick i have terrible eyesight which yeah. actually affects me playing football a lot but um what else can i think oh i'm only i'm not that tall. five foot i think i'm yeah i'm not that tall um anything else uh, do you get short jokes yes i probably make them about myself more just so people <laughs> don't feel bad when they make them about me because if we're doing a drill and i get put up against like a rock i'm like oh great this is going to be so much fun um but yeah not not a lot. I get a couple though. Definitely from a girl on my team. Her name's Ari Norris. She definitely hands them out. Even though she's probably like that much taller than me, she definitely hands them out a little bit. That's a little bit hypocritical then if you're at basically the same. Yeah, I tell her. I tell her, but she swears that she's so much taller than me. No, she probably is. She's I reckon she's about like five six, so she's a good bit taller than me, but to me it's like that much. Um Mark or goal of the year? Which one? Which one would you rather do, and why? Oh, that's such a good question. Personally, I'd say Mark, but because if I was to take a Mark of the Year and take a Masters Becky, oh my god, I would be so happy with that. Just because I usually that's not my aspect of the game, and I feel like doing something different like that that would be so cool. And oh my gosh, so watching Evie Couch and the marks that she takes and all the Speckies, that's so cool. And I I think to myself, oh, I wish I could do that. If I had another life, I would make sure I was like, had a jump like her and be able to do that because that's just so cool to me the way that they can fly in the air and then catch the ball at the same time and take a great mark. You mentioned too earlier about um, marking over your head. I think it was over your head. You said you wanted to improve on a little bit. And uh, yeah, yeah well, that, that would be a big tick if you can start doing those hangers. And you know, you, you can't go wrong either way, can you? Mark, goal. Oh, I always get a 50-50 answer. I choose goal because I was a forward and yeah. always was. But I wasn't a bench warmer, as people say. I was a forward. So, um, yeah, I love goals. And, I mean, if a, a Mark, if there's a photographer there or it's on film, you can get a nice new profile picture if you hang like, yeah. you get a hanger. Good photo of you up like that. That would be really cool. I love stuff like that. That's really the same, yeah. And then for a goal, I mean, I still choose that, but, you know, you can get a film or you can put it as a, I don't know, a pin post or something like that or something you can just send around or something you can just watch over and over again. And would you do that too, by the way? If you were to nail one of those, would you watch it over and over again and would you post it? I'd probably watch it over and over again. I don't know about posting. I get a little bit nervous to post stuff like that. I don't want to come across as too, like, boastful or anything. If I took Mark of the Year, I'd probably post that, though. Goal of the Year, oh. Maybe I would if, like, the Peel Thunder page or something posted it. I'd probably repost it. But I don't know if I'd post it myself. I didn't, oh, yeah, I get a bit nervous to do that. 
Oh, I've got to a point, if there's any advice you want to take from this, is I used to not want to do that. But then once I did it the first time, it just went on from there. Now I'll just do anything like that. Whether it was not a goal or marketing, it'd be something funny. I'll just post it. Like, uh, there's this gimmick I try and do off a wrestler who tells people tells people to acknowledge him. And now I'll literally just use that as a piss take. Every video, or well, not every video, but a lot of videos, a lot of posts, a little bit of a clip, like I just literally before we all came on here, and I just put that up and I put an added pyro effects and just take the take the fun out of uh, make the fun out of it now. But it's just a ongoing thing. At first, people got pissed off, and now they love it. So yeah, nice. just if they love it and keep doing, uh, keep yeah. going ahead with it. Um, now, right, now defenders, I feel like they deserve a bit more love, Ava. I don't know about you, but the in the public eyes from a AFL and AFLW point of view, they don't really get recognised as much as the mids or forwards do because the forwards obviously got the Coleman, mids got the Brownlow, and Rucks again recognising the Brownlow as well. Do you, do the defenders need their own official title as well? Whatever you want to call it, but do they need one as well? Absolutely, defenders are the reason that you win premierships. Like especially in that third quarter when after half time and like the hard gut running hits and for that first bit, defenders are the reason that you either win the game or you lose the game. Like, they're amazing and their ability to, like, like the cohesion that you need with other defenders to be able to work the ball out in, like, high-pressure situations. Because even in the new forward role that I have, if I if the ball gets kicked out of our 50, yeah, probably need to crack down on that defence. But it's, it's not that pressure that you get put on 100% of the time. Like, as a defender, you have that. That 100%. It needs to be up there with the brown low and have a defender's award because they do the most work out of anyone on the field like the midfielders the win clearances to get the goal forwards kick the goal but defenders are the reason you win or lose honestly i feel like they need so much more recognition what do you think of the name well um, i can't claim to have made this name the late danny frawley did on on bounce all those years ago it was the golden fist do you think that'd be a good name for it and it could be a good way to commemorate the life of danny frawley as well too and he was a defender and on the show, yes, he did as a piss take, but it was also serious as well. And they still do it in his honour now. Um, and they have that, I don't know if you've seen it, the um, uh, trophy for it. It's actually a big yeah, golden the And they bang when, the, when it's not broken, by the way. It seems to be broken all the yeah. time now. But yeah, that could be a good name, don't you reckon? Yeah, I think it's good. I used to watch Bounce all the time when I was younger, and I still do when the footy season's in. I used to love that show. And I remember when he did pass away, how sad it was, and I like that they still use that to commemorate him. I feel like that's a good way for that show. I feel like we have to come up with a different name because I feel like that's Danny Frawley's, like, a memorabilia type thing. I feel like – and I feel like a golden yeah. fit is good, but – Defenders do so much more than that. They're marking even ground ball, like smothers. I feel like they need an award to like commemorate all of them. They honestly do so much for the team. They're the backbone of the team, honestly. Very well said. And now you've probably convinced me to actually name it something different for the reasons you just outlined there. You know, leave, let that Danny have that and then um, think something. And I'm sure someone will come with some other name if they were to ever do something like that. Now, have you ever had any player interactions as a fan to an AFL AFLW player? If so, how was those interactions? Were they memorable or not? Um, yeah, with the AFLW side, I have done Fremantle, like, days and workshops with them and knowing, like, Hayley Miller, obviously that was, like, I was a bit starstruck to meet her for the first time and, like, Emma O'Driscoll and girls like that that have so – I have so much – respect for and like it was honestly like a starstruck moment to meet them during that and or in actually I didn't remember this in my she plays Belinda Smith she plays for the west coast um she was doing a physio prac I think and in my metro squad when I used to play uh going into Rogers she was the physio and I got strapped by her so that was probably the first one and oh more recently because like I said I'm a west coast fan we got to stay at the crown just on a family holiday and we shared a spot next to Luke Shuey and his family. So that was pretty cool, honestly. That was really, yeah, really cool. That's really that's coincidental but also pretty awesome. Just randomly saying the same building with the population of whatever it is and building that's got so many people in it and just happened to one out of a million, it's Luke Shuey. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. We ended up giving 
a little spot because we were leaving for dinner for him to sit there. I had a good chat because my I'm a West Coast fan because my dad has always been and I honestly play football because my dad loves it and I love it because he loves it and he used to play uh, reserves for the in the waffle back when he was playing so his love of football has transferred to me and I honestly sometimes play because I know he loves it and I love it and we both do it together yeah. Um. Who are some teammates you feel that kind of fly under the radar a little bit? They don't get talked about as much as they really should. I mean, or, or they get talked about, but not at the level that you feel that they truly deserve to get talked about at. Um, first person that comes to mind, probably the girl that I'm closest to at the club, is Tessa Congress. Um, she's never really likes to be directly in the limelight. She's very humble like that. But honestly, she is an amazing player, whether that's in a defensive role, if it's an in She's an all-rounder. Like, the, her attack on the football is insane and her work rate, she just can go and go and go and go. And I feel like she needs so much more around her because she's an amazing player. And, like, to play with her in the different levels of Waffle W and then in Rogers, like, she was my first friend when I came to the club and just I've always looked up to her and everything that she does because she is an amazing player. And other than her, girls like Chelsea Hutchinson, who you had on a couple of weeks ago, I feel like definitely like Chelsea is just amazing. And she like the way that she can like move the ball and her mark that is insane, especially for a girl that's like she's only my uh, 17 and she's just so ahead of her years. Like she's amazing. Um. Now, this this can go either way. I reckon you'll name some people here. I'm just confident you will. Who is the best chatterbox at the club? Oh, definitely me. <laughs> I'm such a chatterbox. I can talk to everyone. But okay. other than me, um, oh, let me think. I can, think. I can backtrack. We come back to it. Yeah, I feel like I'd have to say myself, honestly. I'm a very big to everyone uh, so who's a teammate if you were stuck on a deserted island with that you'd want to be stuck with and is there any that you wouldn't want to be stuck with um the person i would choose to be stuck with is probably our captain chippy i feel like she would just know what to do know how to get out of that situation she's like really really clever like that obviously mm. she's a bit more experienced and I feel like I would just like panic and go, oh, God, what's going on? Um, yeah, probably her and I probably wouldn't want to be stuck with, oh, I don't know, I don't think I would not want to be stuck with anyone. I feel like we'd eventually get off even if we were really lost, but probably one of the older girls like Chippy I would choose to be stuck with because I feel like they would know what to do and I'd just be so lost. So... <laughs> It's very smart, very smart. Don't necessarily just pick your best mate. Pick the experience, the one that you feel might assess the conditions and know what to do and get out of it and everything like that. And maybe one thing about naming someone individually per se to not want to be stuck with, is, is there anyone that has a certain trait that you would not necessarily, no one has to have this trait that you know, but just a trait in general that you wouldn't want to be stuck with someone that has this trait? What would that trait be? Oh, a complainer that makes everything miserable. And it's like, oh, we're stuck here and, oh, this is happening. Like, you have to look at the positive side of a situation, even if there's, like, an outweigh of negatives to positive. You always have to look at, like, the brighter side of things. Otherwise, you just won't do go anywhere. You won't do anything. So, yeah. Sure, I had someone, again, I don't know who it was. They, it was very smart what they said. The reason that they did not want to pick one of their best mates for who they want to be stuck with because if they were stuck for X amount of time and they weren't so bright in terms of, you know, trying to get out of this situation, they might they felt that they might hate each other after. So you probably don't want to go in with a best mate and potentially go out with no best mate or the best mate or whatever, however you rank them. Yeah, I feel like that wouldn't happen with any of the girls at football. I don't think I could ever hate them. Yeah, I feel like we would just probably bond closer. <laughs> That's very fair. Um, did you want to add anyone else to that chatterbox part or just stick with yourself? <sighs> Me and Tessa are pretty We If we get talking, it's pretty hard to stop us from talking. Yeah, I'd probably say her and me. Why we get along as well as we can always have a good chat. 
Is there ever a point where it gets a training? And I know some other people have said this in the past too, where they're good mates or they're people that connect well. Um, they get the training or whatever, and the coaches tell them, you're hanging out the back, you're hanging out the side, and the coach goes, oi, shush. Is that ever happened? That happened over the preseason so much with Chelsea and Caitlin. They're so close. They're so funny with each other. They would just like muck around in the funniest way. And everyone would go, oh, God, like the coaches would be like, oh, God, you guys are not in the same group. And even if they separated them in different groups, they'd still find a way to talk. And it was really funny to watch. It was, it was quite funny. It was, yeah, because they would just muck around and then like tackle each other and it was really cute. I remember the reason I asked you that was so hoy because Chelsea brought this up as well, that how close they were. And I actually put that as a clip for the Insta post and how tight they were in the uh, yeah connection that they both have. It was pretty cool. And you just elaborated on that a little bit more. It was pretty yeah. cool. Um, what are some of your most prized possessions? Oh, my prized possessions. Definitely my glasses because otherwise I can't see without them. Um, I have a necklace that I always wear. I never take it off. It's got charms from my, it's from my nuno. It's an Italian chain and I've got one from her. I've got one from my mom and I've got one from my boyfriend. So those are things that I always like to keep on me at all times. It's like a comfort thing. I have to take it off for games, but that's about the only time that I take it off. That's probably the biggest thing. What would you say is the loudest and quietest teammate you have? The loudest is Tess. Yes. Um, I think the quietest, I don't think there's a specific person, but certain people within our team are a bit shyer because they've, they're new onto the team or they're not as confident, which is completely understandable because when you go into a new situation like that, it's really hard to... Um, bond quickly with people and you know get your get your standing but definitely some of the new girls are a little bit quieter but Tess is definitely the loudest if she's not at training you'll know because you won't hear anyone screaming <laughs> that's that's fair um favorite food oh this is a tough question because it changes all the time at the moment um Favourite food, I do love good sushi. Good sushi is always my go-to. Oh, actually, I changed my mind. My favourite food is Zambiros. I love a good Zambies burrito. I just had someone on previously who literally just said the same answer and said burrito. And all the Perth girls I've interviewed the last, well, about a month, but in particular the last two weeks, I just keep hearing that. And I'm going to open the... Um, the book a little bit here and so i didn't know what the hell this place was until the last two weeks properly i'm in shock you you please tell me you tried one because it's the best thing ever well look i may have heard from it briefly but like the last if you had said to me randomly like what's this like without mentioning it's food i go oh, i don't know but yeah now I know what it is because I've heard it about every time I've asked that question the last two weeks. Yeah. Zambia, now I know. Very good. That would have to be my all-time favourite. What's a go-to burrito order there? The new chicken, beans, rice, um, no sour cream, no cheese, but you get the guac, you get all the salads, and you get the basil dressing with the squeeze of lime. That's the perfect one. I have to ask this because I know if someone's watching this that doesn't like cheese. Do you not like cheese or can you not have it or do you just don't like it or is it just for certain orders? How are you with cheese? Well, I love cheese, but just not with a burrito. Just that me and Riley Fisher at Peel, we have a lot of things in common and we were actually talking about this the other day. Our Zambies orders are exactly the same and we both agree that you should not have cheese on a burrito. It just has to be how it is. So I respectfully won't agree with that part, but at least you said you like cheese because this person I'm talking about, a good man who I know for a very long time since school, he, he got Rose, I'm opening the book here again. He went to a restaurant last year and I think he ordered a palmy or something like that and he literally said to him no cheese and the waitress she said to him are you okay 
Yeah, that's a fair response. A palmy is like a prime meal. If you can't have cheese on it, just ask for a schnitzel. Yes, exactly. It was, uh, I'm pretty certain it was a palmy, but regardless, it was something that was very rare. And, I mean, you can do what you want. It doesn't matter. It's anyway. just a bit of fun. But uh, I found it funny, that reaction he got. And he told me, and we still bring it up to this day, it was years ago, that he, I did not see that coming, to actually get questioned by a waiter on what you're ordering and how you get it. I would have questioned him. That's like a criminal offence to not have cheese. And a meal like that is different, I feel like. I just wrote down the time of that and I want to show him this later. So that thank you very much, Ava. That's good. Good job. Now, <laughs> food you don't like. I'm not a very big meat or seafood eater. Like yeah. I love pork, I like chicken, but that's about it. I would just think I like squid as well. I don't really like anything else like that. Um, and what else? That's about it. I pretty much like all foods, but I'm just not the biggest meat or seafood person. I'm the same with seafood as well. Um, now, food, the best dish you would be able to cook if you do cook it, if not, this is something just nice and basic. I make a really, I'm Italian, I make a really, really just simple pasta recipe and it's like doesn't even have a name because it's like my own creation but i do make a really good pasta that's again that's a very popular answer for anyone and footballs in particular and i love that answer because that's a good one um favorite actually i'm just ask your favorite takeaway place but you answered that before basically <laughs> the place that i now know what it is that's the that's the place uh What's some quirks someone would say that you have that you wouldn't necessarily like to admit? Ooh, um, probably that I laugh when I'm talking about a funny story before I've told the punchline or, like, told the story. I can't help but just laugh when I'm saying it. That's something I do get told a lot. That's good. Uh, cause you, you, know, you know in your back of your head you've been waiting for hours or days or weeks or however long you're like you're, you're laughing before you even say it out loud yeah and in my head i'm thinking of it's like a situational story and i'm thinking of what happened and i can't help it i just start laughing again yet again right there um i'm the exact same i'll, I'll there'll be something i have in the back of my mind like if we go to cricket training tomorrow or thursday and i'll say i'll have something in my hand now i'll go right i no do not message him or don't ring him leave it in person get their reaction and then <laughs> just go from there yeah uh celebrity crush oh i don't really know if i have one if i had to say i'd probably say jake gyllenhaal that's about it um okay so how would you fancy yourself running the goals in now playing up forward um just recently so how would you fancy yourself in any of the forward situations either a set shot on the run on the boundary uh from a distance I mean, you've got the distance and angle covered. You just said before, 45 metres out in the prelim. It's a fluke, though. That was a fluke, I reckon. Fair enough. But, uh, yeah, how would you fancy yourself in general, you reckon? Um, set shot, I'm pretty confident in. My range is about 35, like as a median answer. I can go a little bit further than that, um, depending on the situation. Set shot, I've always been confident in because... I don't know. I feel like I back myself in my routine. On the run is sometimes where I struggle, and I'm especially to coaches about recently because I put the jets on. I'm going very fast, and then when I don't like give myself that time to take the steps to balance, then it just mm. goes. I've really come a long way with that this preseason, and I feel like that's something that I've improved on a lot. And from the boundary, I've had a couple experiences with that and I feel like I feel like I could do that pretty well I don't know I've never had a lot of experience with that unless we're in like training practicing like that and I do like a good banana a good snap as we love banana goals um so I got a few more questions for you Ava so I really appreciate it and I really do appreciate it um actually I want to start with this before I get to the big question at the end so Going to do a bit of a word association, just one name, or oh, name association, I should say, not word association. Now, what would be, oh, I'll, I'll have to read it out if you can't see it. So how it'll be um, is 
the dots will represent the letters that are missing. Um, and you have to fill the gap out. You can say it out loud. Now, it's a first and a last name. Ignore the capital letters in, in between the middle of a name. That's just how this is done. It's not a happy coincidence. So there it is. If you can see it, otherwise I'll read it out to you. And who do you think the rest of that gap fills out to be? Holly Britton. Gotcha. I don't even need to put it up. That's perfect. Great job. One for one. I just thought I'd try and change things up. I haven't really done that before, so I thought I'd try that. Nice and easy. Uh, yeah. Right, so final one, eight versus real pressure coming on. So dream scenario for you this year. Uh, in a perfect world, what do you want to get out of this year? But going off what you said earlier, next, say, this year and or couple of years. Um, this year and couple of years. Uh, honestly, it sounds like such a cliche response, but I just want to keep improving. I want to keep pushing the boundaries. I just want to keep going, oh, well, Ava's just done this and then the next week I want to make it better. I want to improve my game awareness, like even more composure than I have had. And potentially if that leads me down, oh, and this year in a couple of years getting drafted, being considered as a draft pick, and even if it isn't even, the next year and go you know what I need more time I need more time to work on myself I'll be happy with that because as long as I keep improving pushing the bound being more explosive exciting to watch then that's really what I want at the end of the day I really do appreciate coming on and I don't normally say this publicly or well, I, I do say to everyone privately but I just want to commend you for the work you've done on you today not because of the time but you know your detailed answers to your uh, professionalism that you've shown and not only that but like your ex explanations to know to go through all these things by saying you know it doesn't need to happen now if it happens happen, etc and i mean i've had people on that have had years of experience some that are playing afl and aflw they haven't even spoken as well as you have that's a credit to yourself and i'm sure you'll have a bright future in anything that you do and uh, i really do appreciate you coming on thank you so much thank you for having me this has been great